Well, Sir JF uh, asked a question about uh, the natural history of postoperative atrial fibrillation following cardiac surgery, and specifically uh, tried to ask the question of whether uh, postoperative atrial fibrillation persisted uh, after cardiac surgery discharge uh, from hospital, and particularly in those individuals who had no preoperative history of atrial fibrillation and had no significant pre-discharge history of atrial fibrillation following cardiac surgery. Uh, we enrolled patients uh, who had a high chads vas score, who had had cardiac surgery, either coronary artery bypass graft surgery or bypass surgery and valve surgery. In fact, any type of heart surgery, uh, we excluded people who had uh, a preoperative history of atrial fibrillation. We excluded uh, individuals that had, uh, uh, who, who had a mechanical valve or in whom anticoagulation uh, was being instituted. And we also excluded patients who had uh, greater than 24 hours of atrial fibrillation uh, within the hospital, such that we uh, you know, really enrolled patients who had cardiac surgery without a preoperative history of atrial fibrillation, without significant uh, in-hospital pre-discharge uh, atrial fibrillation. And we randomized them to uh, one of two arms, usual care uh, versus uh, the use of a uh, patch device for continuous rhythm monitoring. This was either a SEEK device or uh, a cardiostat device uh, this is a patch-based device that can be applied uh, to the chest, and it provides us with a continuous rhythm monitoring for approximately for 30 days. The primary outcome was cumulative uh, six minutes or greater uh, atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. Uh, the key uh, uh, results uh, that we found was that for the primary outcome that I just mentioned, 19.6% uh, of patients uh, had uh, this primary outcome compared to 1.7% of patients in the usual care, such that the uh, absolute uh, difference between the two groups was 17.9%, which was highly statistically significant. We also looked at key secondary outcomes, which included greater than six hours and greater than 24 hours of atrial fibrillation, which many would consider to be uh, more uh, actionable per se. And those two uh, were higher in the continuous rhythm monitoring group, 8% uh, and 3% respectively compared to the usual care group. I think the following key conclusions can be made from the search af CardioLink trial. First, that postoperative atrial fibrillation is not uh, restricted to the hospital stay per se. Uh, number two, that in patients with a high chads vas score, uh, where uh, individuals had no significant preoperative or pre-discharge history of atrial fibrillation or no intent to anticoagulate these individuals, that there's an ongoing persistent and unrecognized risk of atrial fibrillation. And finally, these data should help uh, guide clinicians uh, with respect to higher degrees of surveillance and monitoring in patients with a high CHADS VAS score and high risk of stroke following cardiac surgery, even if they did not have atrial fibrillation in hospital after surgery. Uh, the search af trial, I think, is the first step, and uh, future trials will need to be developed to look at whether anticoagulation regimens should be employed in this population, or larger studies are required to be able to answer the question uh, of whether this ongoing so-called subacute risk of atrial fibrillation that we are observing uh, is actually associated with an increased risk of stroke or not.